everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today we're going to take a look at Manjaro GNOME Desktop Distribution. Alright, um, you know, recently I've looked at quite a few of the different uh, Manjaro distributions. We looked at XFCE, the LXQT, ABCDEFG. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, and for those of you that know me, you know I'm a big fan of the GNOME desktop environment. So I figured, hey, it's time to take a look at Manjaro GNOME. Um, now, it's not one of the the main uh, uh, distributions from the Manjaro team. In fact, this is one of the community distributions. Let me pull that up for you here. Uh, so I was just taking a look at it right before... Uh, uh, right before I started the video. Okay, so here's the main Manjaro site. Um, talks a little bit about, uh, you know, the distribution, about how it's a rolling release. Um, if you are if you haven't seen any of my previous Manjaro videos, I suggest you take a look at them. Uh, but, uh, you know, Manjaro is based on Arch, so it is a rolling release. So it's not like Ubuntu where, you know, you have, you know, Ubuntu 13.10 came out and then the new distribution was Ubuntu 14.04 okay you know new quote unquote Man, Manjaro distributions come out um, but you know essentially they're just it's just continuously rolling updating and whatnot so you know if you would have installed Manjaro on your system a year ago okay you can still be continuing to update without having to do a uh, a uh, you know, a fresh installation you know you can just always keep updating and updating and updating and updating um, which in theory you can do that with Ubuntu and uh, you know some other um, non rolling release distributions um, but I, I don't particularly recommend it because it has a tendency to break the system um, you don't really have that with rolling release distributions anyway to so get back to this whole whole uh, Manjaro GNOME thing like I said it is not one of the main distributions um, their main distribution is there we've got the XFCE edition which you see right here their open box edition Jesus open box of course the KDE edition and their minimal net edition this is basically um, uh, you know the the code base so to speak and then you can add whatever desktop environment you want on add on add that on top so like if you want to go cinnamon or if you want to go mate or you know what whatever um, desktop environment you want to go with install this this gets your base code down and then install your desktop environment and move on from there um, and then down here we've got the link for the community editions so if we go to that there's the netbook cinnamon you know I don't need to read through the whole list but anyway so you get down here towards the bottom and you got the gnome and the one thing you will notice on here is that the the GNOME has not been updated since February 25th of 2014. And seeing as how this is the almost the end of July, um, you know, it's like, okay, you know, they haven't been updating it. Well, yes and no. Okay, so, you know, when I went and installed this a couple of days ago, you know, you... you uh, uh, when you do the installation, it puts you at um, Manjaro 0 0.89, I think it was, which is basically the last distribution. But then as soon as you go and do your updates, it gets you updated to not exactly the very latest, um, but fairly recent uh, software packages. So, you know, just because this hasn't been this package right here hasn't been updated since February doesn't mean that you're using the outdated software because once you do your your system update it basically takes care of itself um, 
granted the update did take a while because you've you know basically got like five or so months worth of updates to uh, to add to your system but you know it uh, it still gets you a fairly uh, recent package so anyway, let's take a look at see if I can spell here evolution which is one of our gnome applications here if you click on help the about all right we're running uh, on at least on evolution gnome 3.12.3 so it is uh, you know a fairly recent um, uh, uh, release of gnome um, probably the easiest way to say this is the latest stable release you know gnome 314 is in development right now and a lot of the transitional packages are labeled as uh, 313 uh, and at least in Manjaro, using the uh, your stable packages, um, I'm not seeing any 313s. But you know everything's 312 plus, um, which gets you um, you know a more recent distribution than uh, uh, say um, Ubuntu GNOME. You know Ubuntu GNOME uh, by default is 310. Um, you know you can go and upgrade it to GNOME uh, uh, 312 um, but uh, um, you know that's kind of not uh, how would you put it default um, you know you got to go and add some packages or add some uh, repositories and whatnot to to get that to work that way so anyway let's take a look at what we got here um, as always um, the the Manjaro team they got a neat looking wallpaper um, you know maybe it doesn't uh, suit some of you all out there but I really like the look of it you know simple but neat to look at at the same time um, so no complaints about that now I have gone and done a few appearance tweaks um, not much but some um, and the one downside that I have found with this distribution, this distribution, and it's not really um, the Manjaro team's fault, is that some of the extensions, some of the GNOME extensions that I wanted to add, and then some of the GNOME shell themes that I wanted to use, I couldn't just because those themes and extensions had not been updated for um, 3.12 yet. Um, and like I said, that's not really the Manjaro team's fault. Um, and you know, since since most of your extensions and uh, and your themes are um, community developed, you know, developed by individuals, they're not developed by the quote unquote GNOME team or the Manjaro team. I really can't find fault with them for that. Um, you know, it's just you know. You, those of us that uh, that want to have uh, the latest and greatest in the software, that's kind of the uh, the double-edged sword uh, aspect, so to speak. Uh, you know, there's going to be stuff that you can't use because you're using you know the latest GNOME uh, packages. So, anyway, let me pull up GNOME tweaks just so you can take a look at what I've done here. Um, for your window theme, I've gone with I've changed it to the Dorian theme 312. Um, this Edwada, I guess that's how you pronounce. It. I've never been able to pronounce it correctly, or maybe I have and I just don't know it. But anyway, this Edwada Manjaro Light is the default um, window theme. Um, and I believe it was was it the same? Yeah, it was the same for the um, GTK Plus theme. Uh, the icons were the square nitrix, which is not a bad looking um, um, icon. I, I personally like the square shaped uh, or maybe slightly rounded corners, but generally the square rectangular shaped uh, uh, icons. Um, the shell theme, what were they using? Yeah, there's their default right there, which isn't all that much. Um, let 
let me change it back to what I what I liked. Um, but anyway, you know, let you let you take a look at uh, you know what's default, what's uh, and you go with that, you get it really dark. Um, but uh, you know, I kind of got it tweaked the way I like it to look. So, uh, uh, and that's one of the the, the neat things about the um, the known desktop since they've added this tweak tool it is so easy to go and change the appearance of uh, of a gnome desktop um, really one of the features that I like um, anyway so you can see that and let me show you just uh, real quick the extensions that I've added and what I've got activated and so to speak and this is one little glitch um, that I noticed, um, you know, uh, after installation, I don't know if you really want to call it a glitch or not. Um, but anyway, so I, I did the installation of this distribution, um, added the various extensions that I wanted to add. And then after I had added the extensions, then I did my update. Well, then the next time that I turned the computer on, it tells me and I go to the tweak tool it tells me that a couple of the extensions are not available with um, this shell version and I thought oh okay we've updated from GNOME 310 to 312 those extensions aren't available for 312 well so I uninstalled them and then went back to the GNOME extension page and saw that yes they are available for 312 reinstalled them everything worked fine so I don't know if basically the tweak tool got confused because of performing the upgrade from 310 to 312 or what the deal was. But, you know, ever since then, you know, I've, the computer's been on and off a couple of times and no trouble with it at all. Um, so, uh, you know, doing the upgrade, that's the only thing I can think of that that was a cause for uh, creating that problem. Anyway, so let me show you what uh, extensions I use. I'm not saying use these, but uh, you know, maybe it'll work for you. Um, I like this alternate tab uh, extension, really cool. So yeah, if you use alt tab, um, most on most distributions it allows you to cycle through the various windows that you have open this kind of takes it one step further let me click off tab and you see you get this like window view and you can scroll through the various windows and go to whatever you want um, another one that's similar um, has a really neat, neat anim animation yeah a neat animation a neat animation to it is uh, cover flow alt tab uh, same idea, a little bit different, but uh, neat animation that goes along with it. Caffeine, uh, this one, especially when I'm running these videos, uh, is a lifesaver. Basically what it does, it prevents the screensaver and sleep modes from kicking in. Love that. Dash to dock, it converts your little, uh, I don't even what, know you what you want to call it uh, panel taskbar whatever you want to call this little bar over on the side converts it into a regular dock um, which I like and kind of along with it the little um, tweaks that you can perform on one of the reasons that I like this so much is you can adjust how the maximum height for the dock and then also change the icon size um, so you want it really freaking big or itty bitty tiny um, and uh, you know anything in between and for me since like I'm on my desktop right now and I'm working on a 22 inch monitor even if I went with the largest icon size it doesn't eat up too much of uh, my uh, my screen however if you are on a laptop and you only had say you know a 13 inch monitor to begin with and then if it's not real high resolution that um, you know 
whatever size icon you let's say you had selected a, a 48 which doesn't look too bad for this size screen but if you go and plop uh, plop that onto a uh, you know say a 13 inch monitor that it's not high resolution well that's going to use up a lot of your screen space so you know this does help that out um, you can also uh, play around with your animation times delays that sort of thing you can make it so the dock is fixed and always uh, visible. Um, and there's some other, you know, other stuff here. You can add, apply a custom theme, all kinds of stuff like that. So anyway, um, I really like that extension. Then the no menu, um, you know, a lot of people don't like the whole, you know, when when you get uh, basically this view the, they don't like that kind of a menu and I can certainly understand that and me personally you know I like GNOME from the standpoint that I can hit the super key and then I can type in the exact program that I want to go to or the exact file and and go that route um, you know just like uh, the the dash function in Ubuntu or on unity I should say um, you know, uh, a lot of people like a traditional menu, um, and if I'm going to use a menu, I'd much rather it be this kind of menu as opposed to that whole screen thing. So anyway, that's why I always add this uh, no menu to known distributions. Um, you got some categories right here. Um, starts out with this frequently used. You can you know flip through the categories. Um, you got some quick launchers there, recent web favorites, uh, different ways to display it, the little search bar up there, um, power buttons, and all that kind of stuff. So I uh, I definitely like that extension too. And this is another one that you know all kinds of things that you can do to modify it, um, change its appearance, how you want it set up, all that kind of stuff. Uh, what other are big ones for me? There we go. User themes. Obviously, if you want to use uh, shell themes, you want to add that one in. And that's about it. Um, you know, I don't need a lot of extensions, but the ones that that I add, I I really like having them. Okay. Well, next, I think I'd like to we'll we'll do like a quick little look at all the different applications that comes along with Manjaro GNOME. Um, I'm not going to, you know, talk about every single one of them just because, you know, there's a lot here. And, you know, those of you that have seen my previous videos, you, 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 you know what a lot of these programs are. So I'll, unless something's new or whatever, I'm not going to dwell a lot on it. Uh, okay, so we got 7-Zip, Accessorizer. Um, Here's our software quote unquote center, and I'm going to come back to that in a bit um, uh, just so I can talk a little more about that later on. A couple of games, our Flash Player, Archive Manager, um, Banshee Media Player. Love Banshee. Uh, it's been uh, a, a Linux favorite for a long time. Very good media player. Uh, Brazero for our disk, calculator. Cheese Webcam. Um, Cheese Webcam, it's a fairly decent webcam program, but it's not the one that I typically use. You know, DUVC video. Um, that's the one that I always use for my videos. And the only reason I, I prefer it over um, Cheese Webcam is if you take a look at. at GVC video right here basically got the top bar and then everything else is webcam picture in cheese you've got this big area underneath that is filled up with you know other buttons and options and whatnot um, and at, at least just for me I like this cleaner view especially for doing uh, for doing my videos but you know each his own uh, okay, we got a chess program, clock, contact, uh, uh, 
uh, database access, database browser, DCONF editor. Always good to have DCONF editor um, um, available uh, because you might want to go and tweak a program and it may not, you know, on from from your um, uh, uh, from your graphical menu or whatever, you may not be able to make the tweaks and change the options that you want. Decomp editor allows you to do that. Uh, desktop search, dictionary, or disk, disk use and analyzer, of course our documents, document viewer, DOS box, empathy for um, chat and whatnot, evolution for our email, um, Evolution is probably one of my favorite email clients. Um, uh, definitely, if, if you're looking at full-featured email clients, it's my favorite. Uh, if you want a lightweight emailer, um, take a look at Geary from the, um, Yorba, same people that make Shotwell. Um, Geary is very nice, lightweight uh, um, email program. In fact, I've got uh, reviews of both uh, Evolution and Geary. I'll throw links up on here so you can take a look at those if you'd like to, to see them. Okay, our file manager. Firefox comes by default, as does um, uh, Epiphany, uh, which is now called Web, which is the default um, web browser for the GNOME desktop. Um, I've also added Google Chrome. Uh, just because I'm a Chrome fan and especially with, with making the YouTube videos and um, you know I, I use a lot of Google um, applications that you know it, for me it just makes sense to have Chrome uh, at least available on my desktop. I have a couple more games our font viewer four in a row there's another game uh, G edit for our text editor, uh, Glade, we got um, the GIMP right there. Love the GIMP. If you've never used it before, think of it as the poor man's Photoshop, except that uh, I, I've yet to find anything that Photoshop can do that I can't do in the GIMP. Um, can't sing enough praises for it. Pretty, pretty steep learning curve on GIMP, but um, once again, it it just does so much. It's amazing. G parted for your partitioning needs. Uh, I already talked about GUVC viewer, our help, hex chat, uh, HP device manager. Let's see, we got ICT web on a M image viewer. And where we at? Uh, okay, Caden Live. I added Caden Live. That's what I edit all my videos with. Um, you know, at least right now, not a whole lot to say about it, except it's a phenomenal video editor, um, especially when you consider it's uh, open source and a freebie. Um, only catch to it, it is um, KDE-based, so like in the case of this distribution, since we're running a GNOME desktop, I've got to add, had to add a bunch of dependencies, um, but, uh, you know, it's kind of worth it for a program that you need. Uh, full LibreOffice suite. Um, another game. Our menu. Our printer manager. Manjaro settings. The Manjaro welcomes. More games. Network connector. Network tools. Oop. Went too fast. Hate it when I get ahead of myself. Anyway, okay. Uh, all right, where were we? I Oracle Virtual Machine. I added that myself. Also, our password and key manager, photos. Play on Linux is a front end for uh, Wine, so that you can add uh, Windows programs to your system. Um, and actually, I'm going to be doing a video soon on how to use that to add. Um, Microsoft Office to your system and then how to tweak wine so that it looks a little more uh, 
uh, native and uh, gnomish like or windows like however you want to say or not definitely not windows like but uh, gnomish like or linux like um, popcorn time um, if you if you're not familiar with popcorn time think of it as poor man's uh, netflix um, love it anyway our our power statistics print settings privilege granting or a couple of QT applications for development uh, where was I a couple more games rhythm box uh, robots uh, which is uh, another game there uh, our terminal and root terminal screen reader screenshots um, Scrivener is and actually I've got that installed via wine Scrivener is a um, a novel writing program not just for novels but uh, scripts and whatnot um, and actually if anybody's interested I'll do a, a review of Scrivener as well um, very nice uh, writing software um, where it where it beats out like say LibreOffice or or Microsoft Word is in being able to organize organize long works. Um, you can say make up various scenes or segments of of your of a longer work and then rearrange them without having to rewrite sections and whatnot. Very nice piece of software. Um, Hey, where was I at? Okay, uh, shot well for photos. Simple screen recorder I added. That's what I use for recording my videos. Our software updater, sound recorder, Sudoku, so uh, calendar, as well up uh, system logs, system monitor, terminal, Tomboy notes. Very good note taking application. Uh, our GNOME tweaking tool, videos, uh, VLC media player, um, where was I at? Our viewer, um, GNOME weather and weather bug, um, web right here, that's Epiphany, which I was talking about earlier. All right, well, let's take a look at a few of the Manjaro specific things because that's probably some of the stuff that a lot of people are, are interested in. And I'm going to start with this Manjaro settings. Okay. And, you know, here we can play around with the language packages that are added, what language we're doing, all that kind of hardware detection, keyboard settings. A big thing, though, here that might be of significance to, uh, you know, a lot of the viewers is kernel. All right. And I have not changed this since uh, doing my installation. Um, so right now I am running kernel 310.46-1. Like I said earlier, you know, back when, uh, uh, you know, February, uh, this past February, that probably wasn't, uh, you know, as old of a kernel as it is today. But of course, now you can install up to 3.15.3 on here, and that's probably something that I'm going to do when I finish uh, working on the video, or at least get this thing up to 3.14. Um, but you know, big thumbs up to the Manjaro team for making it this easy to upgrade your kernel. Or downgrade whichever you know whichever way that you want to go um, you know basically to go to kernel 315 I got to click the install button that's it um, and you know downgrade same thing click install I mean that's great uh, anyway so um, number one that's one of the you know especially the the being able to change the kernel that easily uh, something I love there okay so there's that and now let's take a look at our software quote-unquote center um, if you're new to Manjaro 
and you know say you're coming from uh, Ubuntu based distribution you see you can see here we don't really have a software center as such um, we have instead a package manager um, now if you've used uh, synaptic in the past this isn't going to be all too unfamiliar uh, work similarly um, you can do a search like let's just say oh, I don't know we already got LibreOffice on here but let's do a search for LibreOffice and you see there's there's various LibreOffice packages that we don't have installed those are the ones that are the dark gray right there but you get down to green yeah that's the stuff that's installed so uh, you know that's what we got on our system right now um, as you can see we are at LibreOffice 4.2.5-1 which is you know pretty recent not the, not the most recent but because uh, I think uh, um, 4.3 is in beta right now um, oh as you but you can if you look right here you can get the 4.3 you know upgrade to 4.3 and I might be doing that once I get done doing this video uh -huh. anyway um, so you know you can see basically how it works you can search for stuff like that um, you know you can do uh, you can search for shell themes too you know whatever it is that whatever kind of packages you want to look for um, and then now that's looking through the standard um, Manjaro repositories. If you want to look through the AUR, you can. Now, if, uh, for those of you, you know, um, if you're new to the world of Arch, AUR stands for Arch User Repositories. Basically, these are community um, uploaded and maintained packages for your di for for the uh, um, Arch users. So. You just you know once again we'll 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 click on the search in AUR we'll look for shell themes or, well, let's let's even look for something else let's look for um, oh I don't know uh, something to do with a webcam and search in the AUR I see these are all webcam packages that are in the AUR um, so you know on the outside you know um, there's not as many uh, how would I put this there's not as many available official Manjaro um, uh, applications as there are in say the Ubuntu world however once you add in the community driven AUR um, the roles are probably reversed um, because uh, a lot of times in AUR basically the instant that something becomes available if it's something that that a fair number of people want you'll usually find it in the AUR so um, uh, you know it's another way for you to get your hands on some really recent uh, not just recent software but recently upgraded software you know the new distribution of whatever comes out yeah, it usually shows up in the AUR pretty quick. So I, I think the way to end this video is, uh, you know, my overall impression of the distribution. Um, well, I'm loving it so far. And, and to be perfectly honest, I think that, uh, you know, I'm going to play around with this for a few more days, but I think that my daily driver distribution will be changing from Ubuntu GNOME to Manjaro GNOME and and this is you know nothing against the Ubuntu GNOME team they have done an excellent job with their distribution um, but in some ways they are hampered by the fact that it is a Ubuntu based distribution um, here with this Manjaro GNOME they're not they don't run into the same thing and the fact that this is a rolling release makes it even better and, and here's what I mean okay let's take a look at at uh, Ubuntu GNOME 
the uh, you know maybe a month before um, Ubuntu GNOME 1404 is about to come out is when GNOME releases uh, version 312. Okay, well you're gonna and, and rightly so you're going to need some time to test the packages, make sure it's going to work with your Ubuntu GNOME distribution and whatnot. So 3.12 does not come out with um, Ubuntu GNOME 1404. Okay, now if you want to go and upgrade your Ubuntu GNOME to 3.12, you can do that now uh, via adding extra repositories but it just doesn't automatically update on its own for you you've got to go and add extra repositories take a you know some extra steps to get it done the same thing is going to happen when Ubuntu GNOME 1410 comes out you know about a month prior um, uh, GNOME 314 will be out and I guarantee that GNOME 1410 is not or I'm sorry that Ubuntu GNOME 1410 will not come out with the latest known packages it's just always going to be delayed slightly because of you know you need some time to test the new packages make sure it's going to work with your distribution whatnot okay and so I can't fault them with that but because um, you know the Manjaro team is working with a rolling release as soon as they get done testing their um, you know the the four or three fourteen packages it'll be available for Manjaro GNOME and and you're not gonna have to go through oh I've gotta download such and such repository or add that to add that to my repository so that I can download the latest packages no it's just gonna be there so from that standpoint you know, I, I really like it. I like the fact that all of my other software is more up to date than than the stuff that's coming with Ubuntu. So, you know, comparing, say, Manjaro GNOME to Ubuntu GNOME, you know, is there a disadvantage of, of choosing Manjaro over Ubuntu? Not really. Um, for me, you know, there's not much that I'm I'm going to be missing out. Okay, I don't get the Ubuntu Software Center anymore, but as everybody knows, that's one of my biggest gripes about uh, Ubuntu because that thing is buggy, slow, lags, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm not going to complain about missing that. You know, the one thing that I use that for uh, is taking a look at what other people have reviewed software. You know, what they thought of it, that sort of thing. Um, but giving that up, you know, that's not much. The fact that I get all the software so much, uh, not new, how would I say it? Um, that I'm getting the updated software more quickly. Um, to me, that's more significant. Um, I have not found any stability issues. The, you know, the one glitch that I found so far, you know, I already talked about it, and I think that was just uh, something going on because I was doing the update. Um, other than that, you know, I, I, I can't see any downsides to switching from Ubuntu based to the Manjaro based. But anyway, uh, you know, uh, to each his own. And, uh, you know, everybody's got to try out uh, different distributions, see what they like and, and whatnot. Anyway, uh, that about finish things, finishes things up here. Let me know what you thought of the video. Give it a big old thumbs up if uh, if you liked it. I'd uh, love to hear if you've tried Manjaro GNOME. Let me know what you think about it, and uh, and uh, I hope to see y'all on the next video. Be sure to subscribe so you can keep getting this great uh, content. Like I said, I got some uh, great new videos coming up soon, so uh, be sure to stay tuned. Thanks a lot.